So we're jumping on that rickety old bandwagon again. Video games are violent. Don't play them. Protect your children from video games. No, mate. No. Your kids need protecting from this fella. Timey kangaroo down sport. Timey kangaroo down. Not fucking Mario. Then again, you never know, do you? You never really know. The Daily Mail. Oh, the Daily Mail. You wonderfully balanced, unbiased, and totally non-racist UK tabloid. You've got a new target, haven't you? A new crusade, a brand new debate that you can add your two cents to and ultimately fuck up for everybody else. And that debate this time? Violent video games. Yes, that shit rag of a newspaper has decided that dragging that dead argument out of the grave is a worthwhile cause, taking specific aim at quantic dreams eagerly anticipated Detroit become human. In an article penned by Sanchez Manning and Simon Murphy last Sunday, the two writers sought to criticise the domestic abuse which featured heavily in Detroit Become Human's latest trailer, a trailer that was revealed last month at Paris Games Week. So you're, uh, you're, you're about a month late to that party then, lads. Yeah. Yeah, timely, timely fucking journalism there, son. In said trailer, we were given yet another glimpse at what has now become a signature of sorts in Quantic Dreams games and somewhat of a calling card for the studio's enigmatic founder, David Cage. An emotionally wrought moment that has a multitude of different outcomes based on player interaction. More specifically, it is a trailer in which we see autonomous maid Kara presented an opportunity to stop abusive father Todd hurting his young daughter Alice. The trailer shows the many ways in which the player, as Kara, can affect the outcome of the scene by making certain narrative altering decisions. In one instance, we see Alice shooting Todd to protect Kara, and in another more disturbing scene, we see Todd having killed his daughter Alice a result of Kara doing nothing. It is a strong, emotionally powerful scene, illustrating the mechanics of the game, whilst also showcasing the kind of places that developer Quantic Dream is willing to go with Detroit Become Human. Sure, it is uncomfortable to see, and will no doubt be a struggle to play through, but if handled correctly from a storytelling sense, could be a shining moment for video games. A moment that proves just how far the industry has come in terms of narrative communication. Now what the Daily Mail has done is taken this scene, this, this trailer for Detroit Become Human, and stuck it in front of certain MPs and leaders of children's charities, presumably without any context whatsoever. As such, they have got some sensationalist reactions that provide the fuel for a sensationalist article. And those reactions looked a little bit like this. Childline founder Dame Esther Ranson said that violence against children is not entertainment. It's not a game. It is a real nightmare for thousands of children who have to live through these kinds of scenarios. The makers of this game should be thoroughly ashamed. I think it's perverse. Who thinks beating a child is entertainment? Andy Burrows of the NSPCC no, no, not, not that one from Razorlight, said that any video game that trivialises or normalises child abuse, neglect or domestic violence for entertainment is unacceptable. Peter Saunders, the founder of the National Association of People Abused in Childhood, it's a bit of a wank name, mate, said that abusers will get off on this stuff, and the other thing we know beyond question is that video games end up being played by children, and, scarily, the proliferation of salacious and abusive images is actually encouraging violence and abuse. MP Damien Collins, chairman of the Media, Culture and Sport Committee, he's a, he's a fucking Tory, so just f ignore everything already, said it is completely wrong for domestic violence to be a part of video games, regardless of what the motivation is. Domestic violence is not a game, and this simply trivialises it. I worry that the people who play this, who themselves have suffered abuse, will use this game to shape the way in which they deal with abusers. <sighs> I mean... I mean, that's not, it's not fucking good, is it? It's not good, that isn't. I mean, we, we, take, we take one step forward, and then the daily fail, as it does with every single progression of the human race, forces us all back ten paces. Because they're fucking fucks. What these statements seem to allude to, though, is that these people, these people in considerable positions of power, still consider video games as a toy 
as a child's plaything. It is an ignorance of the subject at hand to the highest degree, where these people have been asked to make statements on Detroit Become Human's choice to explore domestic abuse without any knowledge on the industry, without any inclination of where gaming is moving toward, nor how much it has developed. The fact is that video games aren't about chasing high scores anymore. They have matured and grown into something far more capable. Subtle and nuanced storytelling combined with immersive gameplay are the current zeitgeist of the industry. Gaming is more than competent at tackling difficult subjects, oftentimes doing so with more impact due to its interactive nature. But no, according to these ill-informed politicians and charity leaders, video games attempting to tackle domestic abuse is, quote, perverse. And yet it is entirely okay for EastEnders to show Little Mo's face getting bounced off the edge of the kitchen side by Trevor Morgan at 7.30 on a Wednesday evening. Talk about double standards. On top of that, there's also some sort of misconstrued notion that we're all brainless idiots, that we are quite likely to imitate the violence we play out in video games, when in actual fact that link between video games and violent behaviour is becoming widely established as total bollocks. Yes, total bollocks. A study that came out of the Hanover Medical School in March of this year compared the aggressive behaviour of those who played violent games like Call of Duty for at least two hours a day to the aggressive behaviour of those who didn't play video games at all. The study found that there were no differences in levels of aggression or empathy in either group. Yes, science! Moreover, you can actually reduce this entire portion of this debate with some quite simple logic. The fact is that there are millions of gamers in the world. And if video games are in fact this dangerous at developing violent behaviour, then why aren't there millions upon millions of violent individuals in the world that have been fueled by video games? Why aren't Call of Duty players across the globe stabbing people in the neck? Why aren't the tens of millions of people who bought Grand Theft Auto V running down pedestrians and starting city-wide shootouts. Maybe it's because that link between violence in video games and violent behaviour is no more prevalent than any other entertainment media. Maybe. Just maybe. You know, just maybe, just, just a little bit. Just a little bit! And yes, I will concede that children do get a hold of these games when they probably shouldn't, but that argument still stands despite the moldability of a young mind. I mean, I smoked cigarettes, I, I drank alcohol, I saw explicit pornography, I watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I played Manhunt, all before I was legally of age to make such decisions. And I... I turned out fine. Didn't I? Pretty... I'm pretty confident I turned out all right. I mean, there's no, there was no like lasting, there's no lasting detriment to me like drinking when I was younger. It's not as if I'm an alcoholic and I can't, I can't go without a drink. I mean, I can record a video and not have a beer. I mean, that, I've done that multiple times before. It's not as if I've done it three weeks in a row and had a beer every time I've recorded one of these. It's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm totally and utterly functional. What this entire debate becomes then, if you can even call it a debate, is an entirely antiquated argument from about 15 years ago. An argument that has no solid foundation, that adds no constructive criticism to the discussion, and simply proves how fucking tone-deaf those people are who still perpetuate this myth. And yes, I'm talking to you, the Daily Mail, you pieces of utter shit. More worrying, though, is that those tone-deaf people, those who are making these wildly uninformed opinions, are in those aforementioned positions of power. In a position where they can quite possibly wield that power to make changes that could affect the video game industry. And if you think that's too far-fetched, think that this won't amount to anything, which it probably won't in all fairness. Just remember one thing. Remember that given the right motivations, the right incentives, those politicians and those people with considerable power can make the impossible happen. We have already seen the uncomfortably impossible happen more than a few times in the past 18 months. So getting a video game banned? Well, that will be just fucking child's play. So there we have it. Violence in video games. Is it making you violent? Are your children menaces because of video games? No, they're not. They're just not, are they? It doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't happen. Honestly, it doesn't fucking happen, mate. I have, in fact, reached out to Damien Collins to, to get some clarification on his statements to see if he does consider video games as a lesser form of entertainment to try and ascertain whether or not he does, does understand where video games lie and where they're at right now in terms of their development. 
Whether or not I will get a response, well, that's another fucking matter entirely. Anyway, what do you think about this whole thing? Do you think violence in video games is affecting people? Do you think domestic abuse in Detroit Become Human has no place? Do you think domestic abuse in video games in general shouldn't be explored? Is that kind of a taboo topic? Come and let me know in the comments down below or over on Twitter at Daryl Does. And until next time, my friends. Timey kangaroo down sport. Timey kangaroo.